students here. And so I would like also to thank you that stay here after a long day to listen to my lecture. And uh, what I want to, um, you know, to, to do, I can, I can open the web, so I do not need. Uh, what I am talking to you today is uh, something about the fact that, uh, you know, uh, when we talk about city, when we talk about urban things, we always think about transformations. Uh, dynamic city is dynamic by definition. Why? Because you will see here just a, a sort of a carousel of, of different things that will underline what I'm, I'm talking to you. That is, uh, they, they are images belonging to our, you know, uh, the domain of, uh, of our imaginary, the domain of our history, and the domain of the technology. So, uh, took it as a sort of carousel that is ongoing. Meanwhile, I will give you some, some ideas about what is the transformation. This is what I like, when to stop and go. This is one of the most important um, factors that are mind me. This is one uh, um, a public um, 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 campaign that was held in the 90s in Portland, Oregon. And uh, almost nobody knows this campaign. This campaign was supposed to uh, make a sort of uh, posters all along uh, the streets and in some specific areas, urban areas, to understand how people use the city. Because one of the most important things is not only uh, it is that we have always to keep in mind that we are working with different layers. One is the physical one, one is the, let's call it the human one, and one is the layer of the environment and the nature. So these three big domains, uh, sometimes we forget that we are working with this three aspects and we focus too much in the physical, so we expect that all the techniques and uh, the technology and everything will help us to draw a wonderful urban space, city, architecture, environment. But this is not true. And sometimes we rely too much in the human uh, society. So we think that, for instance, we are talking this afternoon about participatory process. There are a lot of warning. I work in participatory process, face to face. In general, I will show you some examples later. Um, I work in participatory process. I think that I was the first designer that designed a website, interactive website, for a plan, an urban plan in Italy in the 90s. And uh, so I know quite well, I'm aware of the problem of technology, um, but I'm aware of the problem of the conflicts and uh, the problems of the interactions into the society with so many different wishes and uh, powers and so on. And last but not least is about nature. Nature for us is something that we use we have seen, oh, this is la ville apparaît beaucoup plus faite de que de briques. It means that the city, it seems made more by ideas than bricks. And that's true. This is exactly what is, you know, is your domain as a scientist, future scientist or future urban designer or urban planners, is the domain is the domain of ideas. So are the ideas are the ones that are guiding other, other things. So anyhow, uh, the city is always, uh, I would say it in transformation. <coughs> the last one is the nature. The nature we think is something that we can just use. When my students say, say to me, I'm going to design the greenery system, 
when today we had a team that was talking about how to work on this river sideband. We were talking with uh, uh, Punk Visit and the students. Uh, there is no clear distinction of what this nature is or how you use the nature for your purpose in design. And uh, what is, is clear is that the ecological niche of mankind is the city. I'm sorry to say, it's not exactly the nature. Since the beginning of, our, of the history of mankind, we try to, to make some shelters, even in the desert, right? Uh, we try to, to, to put some uh, places where we can recover, but not only where we can interact, where we can find some pleasure, or we can find some functions. So, I am uh, not so fan of the idea that we are, you know, the nature is us. We are belong to the nature, but it's not that the nature is us. We always, uh, let's say, interact with nature. In the last uh, uh, decades, we passed through different paradigms. Uh, the first one, if you remember, was the adaptability part. We human, let's say, react and react in really strong way against the environment. As I said before, we protect ourselves. Uh, we have to recover. So we adapt and we find a way how to adapt the nature to us, not as to the nature. In the last century, in the 20th century, um, you know, everybody, everybody heard the word sustainability, isn't it? But right now, if I have to ask to you, what is sustainability? What is your answer? Do you have an answer? Till 60s we talk about 70s we talk about sustainability because it was after the club of Rome that was uh, you know um, uh, uh, Mr. Uyakor met him uh, we were um, there was a group of uh, a team of experts um, working on the growth of the world and what could be you know the future of the world the 70s were a rich environment with a lot of utopias, with a lot of ideologies, and with a lot of visions of the future. And uh, after, in that decade, the, uh, 1972, there was written the book, The Limit of Growth. Dennis Meadows, that you met and you worked with, and with me, uh, was one of the author. And the celebration of the 40 years in 2012 during our summer school in my opinion, was a sort of a sad anniversary. Because it's just to recognize that after so many years, we didn't, you know, didn't clearly understand what was the, 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 the thing about. So, we just make a carousel and go back again. So you can see many elements there. Um, so the nature, the, uh, when we talk about sustainability, uh, the paradigm of it was like, OK, we are hitting the nature all the time. So we must somehow, we are the danger for the nature. So it's not that before it was nature was the danger for us. Now during the sustainability, ideology, I have to say, not the concept, but it was nature is, uh, sorry, human are dangerous for the nature, are a danger for the nature. And, uh, and therefore, you know, if you work in this extreme meaning and definitions, of course, you cannot find the, 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 the proper way how to, to manage and to handle these concepts. So we found that too often disasters are hitting our world. And therefore, a new paradigm came out, that is the paradigm of resilience. 
Now resilience is another word I always say to my students. It's a word that is too misunderstood, let's say. Uh, resilience is everything. Uh, if you substitute in some scientific papers of the last 20 years the word sustainability with resilience, you will see that the approach is the same. So this is, I mean, it's meaningless. So we have to think really as resilience, there is a new, a really new approach. Not as is in written in, uh, you know, I, 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 I put somewhere that, uh, you know, resilience is a common, everybody talk about resilience. Uh, last time in my, one of my flights, looking to the description of one beauty creams, there was, it increased the resilience of your skin. What is the meaning? <laughs> you know, so everybody talking about it. It's, we must, and especially we and you, we in the way how we transfer the knowledge, the knowledge to you, and you as young generation, as you use, you will use the, 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 the terms, be careful, because the meaning of resilience is a quite crucial point. And this is true that, um, as uh, Mr. Huyaker pointed out, I work in the, the concept of resilience in the last, let's say, 15 years. And uh, the concept of resilience uh, is not only that, you know, uh, is not elasticity, is not robustness, is not that something that just stand the shock or that is to resist, is not just someone that bunch back exactly as it was before. I will show you a small video at the end of my speech about re it's resilience so you can understand. Anyhow, what is the problem of transformation? If you see if you have to, to, to look to all these materials, those are materials. Those are materials not because they are physical materials. Sometimes they are just, uh, as you have seen here, posters. There are some just images. There are some emotions. And we must work in the, uh, in the design and in the planning, let me say. Also in planning, because sometimes people don't forget that planning has a, a high um, level, includes, sorry, high level of emotions, because it includes, again, people. So the combination of all these ingredients make not a product. Another thing that we are really looking to often is to the production. I heard my young colleagues here, uh, my young colleagues here talking this morning to the students, you are, you know, you are looking to the design, it's fine, but it's an object. So the so-called, the single object, uh, do not help the transformation of the city. They put just, just uh, more uh, rigidity, lacks flexibility into the system. Because the, as I said, the urban uh, structure, it's true that it's a structure, but it's a dynamic structure. So, launching back to the 70s or the 30s and urban planning and urban design, we, uh, we know a lot about, do we? About system dynamics. Uh, this, um, this afternoon, we were, you know, presented by Dr. Uh, I assume uh, he shown us this this uh, project that you're sharing about, uh, you know, mobility. Mobility is one of the main flows in the city. Is one of the main aspect of, uh, let's say, her human life. We move. We walk. We go from one point to the other. This is a man, mankind uh, attitude. So to work on this, you know, is crucial. And this is an, one of the discovery in the urban transformations and cities transformation. Because what happened 
in uh, you know in many cities is exactly like that. Is people that move from one place to the other, leaving some rigid structures from one place to the other. Uh, uh, it's not the first time that uh, you know if you move in Italy um, along the countryside, especially in the south of Italy, you will see that there are a lot of unfinished buildings, a lot of abandoned buildings. Uh, in the example that I was shown to you this this uh, this afternoon, early afternoon, about Biasca, I didn't show you exactly the situation how it is right now because it was more about the design. But the truth is that there is a decrease in terms of uh, demography, but there is this decrease is leaving a lot of buildings apart because you know they were too much big or in the wrong place or it's difficult to manage them so they are just abandoned uh, one of the main examples I'm sure that everybody knows is the example of Chicago right the example of Chicago that shrink to 850 um, uh, thousand of inhabitants, that is the half, the 50% of the number of the inhabitants in 1950. So this phenomenon, for instance, is uh, driving us, us, sorry, us in the Western world, but I'm thinking that is driving also you in this part of the world, is driving, driving us to think about different things like reuse, reappropriation of the space, revitalization. You see, we use always the word re, re that is re in as a scheme from Latin and means once again. So it means that we have to rethink to our domains, our urban domains. We have to rethink about how to shape the, the space. And uh, you know, since uh, let's say, since the beginning of 2000 years, I was thinking that was a problem of us, Western countries, because we had, you know, we were not in deep development, we had, um, you know, this sort of demographic um, uh, decreasing rate. We had the such kind often of problems of economy because we switched from hard industry to uh, much more digital and financial market, so to another type of economy. And I was thinking that probably this is our problems. And then I started to visit it, to visit these countries. And I see something that for me was even more cruel. That is, spaces developed and abandoned. So, or developed in the wrong place, in the real well, I don't want to say, I have to mention, I will show you about wrong places in Italy, a tons of it. But developed in the wrong place and then abandoned. And the solution of this was always demolish, no too much expensive, uh, try to revitalize uh, using, for instance, uh, new functions or using, uh, you know, strong uh, infrastructures. Uh, I will show you uh, right now something that is related with layered and infrastructures, thanks to the courtesy of uh, uh, one of my former master students, she is, she is doctor right now in architecture and urban design, working in the University of Venice, Francesca Zanovello, and it's about Venice. What I appreciate a lot from your presentation is the wish to use nature in order to fit 
mankind in order to fit, let's say, the urban and, the, and the, the society, not only the urban structure, and in a way that can revitalize and maybe is a sort of, um, not a soft, of course, because it requires a lot, but the idea is really don't put much more stress and, uh, and impact and, uh, and weight in an environment that was already, you know, occupied and suffered of uh, overlapping, too much overlapping of interventions, like, for instance, the city of Bangkok. So, if you allow me to... Oh, yes, I love it. I love this is the one, you know, one picture from, from, you know this, the movie. Do you know this movie? Kill Bill, come on. This is Kill Bill by, by Tarantino. And you lie, is what she said. Yes, sometimes we lie, unfortunately. So this is a lecture that Francesca gave to, and I asked after that, I ask her if I can use it in, a, you know, to show the structure of Venice, because it's quite, it's quite well. Um, you know, uh, the city, have you never been in Venice, people here? No? You? Yes, and you, and you. These three people have, I think, also Professor Rimosu, have been in Venice as well. So, the Venice is this, this uh, the historical town, but the municipality of Venice includes all this area. All the lagoon. So, there's, I asked the Francesca to draw for, um, for the, the students and what I want to show to you today is what uh, is uh, the meaning of the relationship between the land and the water here. And the relationship is, uh, you know, uh, is really strong because the lagoon is the meaning of Venice. The lagoon is, uh, you know, uh, a surface of uh, 55,000 of uh, hectares of a wetland, and uh, the the water made possible a lot of, uh, uh, you know, different uh, biodiversity, biodiversity, but also uh, some human interventions. Is uh, a city. Uh, the Lagoon of Venice is a plural city that is defined by different densities and uh, word lines, like here, and this, and this. So you see, it's a system. These are the morphologies of the Lagoon. You can recognize here, you know, this is just water and marsh and wetland. It's quite charming. I lived in Venice, by the way, for more than 20 years, so I, I know what I'm talking about. And uh, so there are some main ways. Why? Because you cannot go by boat here. It's too, uh, it's too low, the level, the depth of the water. You can just uh, cross, you know, from here to here. And this you can use for a different purpose. This is another main. But you know, there are really, you, if you want to go by, by, by boat here, you must know, know the environment. You cannot go just looking to a map. You cannot use your uh, mobile or Google map or mobile phone. You can't, you can't. And Venice is one of the most touristic attraction into the world, right? <coughs> so you can understand that it's quite urbanized. So, sorry. So this is the, the morphologies of the lagoon, but also these are the morphologies of the lagoon, because this is the island, Torcello Island, where, by the way, uh, Francesca is working because uh, she worked for her master thesis in 2000, uh, in 2000, she worked in the archaeological um, park 
into the lagoon, the north part of the lagoon of Venice. So she's working with archaeologists mainly. Um, uh, this is Torcello, that is an archaeological site, and of course is one of the heritages. This is how the lagoon was, you know, was painted in the past. You see, close the boundaries of the mainland, something that is like the, the sea is over there, so everything is open and there is just a main uh, river. So these are... Am I right? No. Yes, sorry. Uh, this is again the lagoon. You see the system. The main part, the main actor is the water. Then suddenly, there is, you know, in the one fifth, uh, 16th century, but I mean like 15, 1500, is one of the most famous map in the world, that is the Jacopo de Barbaris map of Venice, that is really detailed and is full of buildings. So, from here you can start to understand that the lagoon is surrounded a built city, a stone city. It's not a water city anymore. But there are other representation of the lagoon here. In the, this is what I studied because I didn't. I never mentioned even to my students that I, my 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 studies were with uh, a famous Italian geographer. Uh, Franco Farinelli, and I study especially the urban images into, you know, Incunabola, that are the first printed books, and also I work with archaeologists in some exhibition of all. This is, was one of the maps that uh, I put a lot of pressure to be restored from the Archivio di Stato di Venezia. So, again, land and water. Built environment and water. And again, the water itself. Now, the water, um, you know, previously, okay, we have the water, but the attention is on the built environment. And uh, here, the attention is on the water environment. But not structured. Here, we start to, to, to think about channels. Those are channels. This is water, of course. Those are channels. So what you call waterways, or you know the uh, network uh, water road network system. And this is Venice. In uh, this is a famous picture in the uh, 1982. Is one of the first time that the 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 geographical information systems start to, to be applied, and this was one of the first images of the city of Venice. Uh, let me say, if you look to the, to the new one, I mean, the new in the 2015, from this scale, it didn't change that much, because by law, it's a word uh, heritage, you cannot change that much. But, again, what affected the built environment? Waterways and earthways. Can you see the difference? These are the water. These are the system of the pedestrian. I forgot to tell you, but you know probably that there does, doesn't no car are existing in Venice. You cannot. I have no drive license. Maybe there is a reason why. And. Uh, so, uh, this is a Le Corbusier uh, aspect that is, uh, you know, uh, um, following, this is what is in Italian, is following so different routes, we found again the law of uh, urban design that is shining in Venice. Uh, so, the buildings are, you know, occupying the sky, line and the communication are really punctual uh, between this, uh, you know, main streets, but also between uh, the channels. 
And this is say, il pedone padrone del suolo, come sarà nella nuova città di oggi. He, take, he took um, some inspiration from Le Corbusier, from Venice, sorry, Le Corbusier, for the, what is so-called plan voisin, that is the way that, you know, you can separate the pedestrian from the other system. Um, the built town. These are how Venice is built. So this is the orientation of the buildings. You can see really narrow and straight. There are big opening, like for the one, uh, I'm sorry, probably the one that have been there already knows the Arsenale, but this is a big um, um, ship's talker in, 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 in Venice. It was used in the past. And then again, the water and the built environment. So you see here, how the water works. But what I want to show you is that there are different systems, you know, and uh, different layers. This is one of the work that was done in the late 90s, the beginning of 2000, and it was about how to, um, uh, that is important probably for you, how to make all the channels more suitable for uh, navigation. Because in this before, you know, you have to clean and uh, the building has to be restored. So it was a huge um, structured work that was made in all the city in order to clean the channels, uh, to restore the, the facade of the, of the buildings and to make uh, suitable to navigation again. Uh, these are what is the, the, the shape of the building are, you know, uh, you can see here, this is, uh, do you know, do you understand why we show this picture here? Because it was a channel that was covered. So previously, this was, um, this was a water channel. And now it's, you know, uh, covered. Another thing is that the building sometimes follow simply. Here it is uh, Cadore Capesaro. This is Capesaro. Uh, this is just following, uh, uh, you know, the line and the, the site, how it works, the site of the water. So is not, is not the channel that is guiding the way how they build the house. Sorry, it's not the house that is guiding the way how they build the, the channel or they influence the form of the channel, but it's the channel that drives the shape of the, the building. So uh, this, by the way, that was close to my former university. So there are some insula, that there are morphology of different kinds of the insula you can see here. This is especially for the students that are working on Chiang Mai example, for instance, because this is a topic that probably you have to work with. So there is around the island, and uh, this was a channel covered again. So there are a sort of empty space, if you look to the pedestrian, no, we have a constriction. You know, uh, the Cali in Venice are really narrow. This is, uh, let's say, it could be... One meter, one meter. Right, not, not more. So, and you have to cross, and, and you can see this on the facades. But then, when you cross to this and you reach the channel, you have to see, to see the, the, the sky and no one can claim. So we have some uh, vision of the compression construction. And then we have the campo. The campo are the main square and is the place, you know, the public space. In Venice, this is, no, sorry, it was, because now it's a touristic place. That doesn't mean public space. 
It is as a note, I mean, I think that uh, Francesca took this picture probably in the, in the 80s or the 90s. Um, this is Campo Santa Margherita. Campo Santa Margherita, you can see some unfinished things like this tower. Uh, when I was a student, I was working in this building in the, in the cafe as a waitress. And uh, so I, I work, I mean, I was allowed in the surrounding. And this, uh, in the 80s, it was a terrible area, but really populated, densely populated, populated by the nation. And uh, I don't know, there is no other, but actually the Campo is uh, somehow, you know, this is the, the Campo of Santa Margarita. This is the Campo. And here you have, you know, vendors of uh, groceries. Uh, you have the bakery. There was a bakery here. Uh, you have, of course, some cafe, but you have also some other shops, and also here. Actually, this is, this is what they called the, the house, uh, because it's um, isolated from others. Uh, is the person who execute uh, the, the execution, but I mean, is I mean, the one that that make. So it, it was separated and isolated from the other context because it must be isolated. You know, no one wants to stand close. So it's called Casa de Boya, and this is uh, the system, and it worked. But now, what you and this is another one. This is the most famous one, San Marco Squares, Piazza San Marco. And, uh, you know, uh, you think that in Venice there are a lot of, um, of uh, treasures on the surface, but there are a lot of treasures also underground. So, and the underground means, you know, uh, to escalate on the existing like a, a torcello here, and to establish, you know, different uh, mosaics and, uh, you know, and even something that is an island on the water where they discover, I work a lot with uh, a diver archaeologists, they discover a galea that was an ancient uh, ship, and, you know, they decide to, to put you know, to, to open, to make uh, pictures, to study it, and then they, dis they put into, you know, water again. <coughs> so, um, uh, there is two theaters. One, you know, that is uh, Teatro La Fenice, is well known for the concerts. But uh, there is also this theater that is from the uh, 19th century, the Teatro Malibran. And this was where the excavation, you know, this is the location, the excavation underground, and they found Roman and also here. So, why I'm talking about geo-urbanism? Because somehow we have to remember that we are a layer, you know, I, I took it's not a, um, a word and a idea that I invented. It was something that one of my old masters, Rosario Pavia, that is working in aesthetics of a city, uh, wrote that we are going toward a new era that is a sort of geo-urbanism. But it's only because we have to study the overlap system, urban systems. So this is what we call Venice, yes. This is the city that we live and see but this is also a place where we have a high level of men scale, there are no cars, we benefit of culture. So if you look to this, it's like a paradise, right? But it's also the place where to live is expensive, the, the, the tourism is not under control. Uh, now, in the last years, there is, uh, and now in the last year, there is a strong debate against the big uh, touristic um, cruise uh, ships because, you know, I was used to live in the um, Judeca, 
that is an island that is facing uh, I mean, uh, the opposite, the main island. And uh, when I was in my house, that was a, an ancient palace, in, sometimes you can see just the, the light in the, into the, the fog, the light of these big ships. And of course it's charming. And of course it gives a lot of money to the city, but, but it causes and it causes and causes a lot of damages. And now they are discussing about the touristic uh, ships, but when I was students, we fight in the 80s uh, strongly because this was a channel where the oil uh, tank uh, ship were crossing. Could you imagine that is, you know, in this environment, if something happened? So this is what the was the Venezia water rules, and now what is the time? It's 6 p.m. So we can just make a break. And uh, do you think that we can make a break and, and begin immediately after? Then then I will continue. But this is a break. What do you think? Okay, so, okay, just to give you uh, something about resilience, I will show you something about resilience. It's, it's really a small video. And then I think that we will have a break, but it's not exactly a break, so you do not have to worry because it will be a game. So we are going to play a game. No? It's okay? Okay. There's no real end to it, but time goes by. I came to realize it's all a process. As someone said, life is about not knowing, having to change, taking the moment and making the best of it without knowing what's going to happen next. They told me you don't have to be good. You just have to let your body love what it loves. And I began to believe them. I just kept going. And one day, I was back. As time passed, I began to feel a simple gratitude. Life doesn't stop at the good times. I'm never really going to be the same. Things are different, and my journey continues.
Now I look at things with new eyes and dream of camera shots instead of needle shots. Now I can look forward to the future.
to communicate. So there was a lack of, in this case, let's say, verbal communication. But I saw a lot of you that start to communicate by body language, right? So you communicate in a way that, yeah, so we are, you know, all around, that's fine. That wasn't because, you know, the other, what did they feel the people that has the shape as a rectangle or square? How do you feel? Because I, I saw that you were trying to, to put some rectangle there and then it didn't succeed and, and then it was just the sort of the chaotic order. So we are too shy or too tired to tell. Anyhow, that's fine. But this, the meaning again is what about when you have you know, such kind of uh, uh, problems that are related with the coordination of so different, again, levels. There are layers in the city. And layers are also social layers. And meanwhile, I will open another thing. I will show a quick example of a master's student of mine. This is about the reconstruction, plan of reconstruction of a small town after the earthquake in 2012 in Emilia Romagna. You know, we had two big earthquakes and that would be severe for us, not compared with the Japanese magnitude, but they, you know, they caused a lot of damages. One was 2009, they destroyed L'Aquila, which had a lot of victims. The other one was in Emilia Romagna. That is a quite wealthy region of Italy where, you know, Many centers were, were destroyed. Novi Modena was one of those many centers. And we were, this is some icons and, and pictures of the past. This is Novi today. Uh, today means after the earthquake. So this is the symbol of the town. This bell tower was the symbol of the town. They, when in this small town, the, they saw the collapse of this, of this tower. It was really uh, not only a sad moment. For them, it was really a tragic, a tragedy, because they they told we are losing the last piece that is linked with the, you know, the heritage with our past, and that is the situation right now. So you, you see, damaged building or you cannot enter in the building. And in the 2012, one of my former student, master student, um, she's an architect. She was asked to. She's working in interactive uh, design and, uh, and planning, and uh, she was asked to, to deal with uh, you know the reconstruction, the phase of the reconstruction of this uh, city, but using participatory approach. And this is what uh, what she did, and she asked me to, to be part of this process, and I involved also Margherita, that is. Uh, master student that is uh, um, actually she is a, a Swiss event for, for some uh, professional uh, job but she will be back in, uh, in, uh, in uh, next month in Sardinia. And uh, Margarita worked for one year not only in the design but she changed her approach to the design because the, the, the beginning Margarita was thinking yes you know I have to design something public space for instance that is the dual space, the concept of the dual space that I'm using in my lab, that is to design a public space with not monofunctional, you know, like only entertainment, only commercial, only residential, you know, not, never. Uh, in the, the example that I presented already, you see a mixed use of, of, of space. These are some of the tools the main was to work on uh, uh, connect, uh, animate, and this is, was the main, uh, the main focus. We have to start from the piazza, from the square, from the core, from the earth of the, of the, of the city. You see here many actions uh, and that we are taken in order to revitalize, to keep people to feel uh, sort of like in the, in, the, in, the, in the image before, to feel resilient, to feel the face that they can go and, and look forward. 
she, this is uh, especially a project uh, with a school like Margarita because they have to rebuild a new uh, junior high school. So they, 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 she worked with them in order to, you know, to, to realize it. And uh, there were, let's say, this is uh, the, one of the, the first action that is uh, the urban attack. We call the first urban attack. And, uh, and in, uh, in my opinion, it's quite interesting because it was a sort of, uh, uh, I'm sorry that the uh, professor is not anymore with us because he, uh, you know, um, he showed some example of this tactical urbanism. So they arrange, we are starting the game, the future is in our hand for, uh, for Novi and with Novi. So, this is Monia, my former student. Uh, you know the square, the main square is completely um, fenced because it's uh, gated, it is, it's not possible to enter. So they put these, you know, thoughts and uh, one night, they put this, this thought and, and everybody was invited to write something, keys, uh, and, uh, and they just hang on these on this fences. Is uh, uh, it's quite, uh, you know, it's not expensive, it's easy, and um, it, it was something that people started to understand how to deal with the situation, how to find a way, you know, and uh, the other that didn't participate, suddenly in the morning, they so saw all these colored balloons on the fences, so they, they were a bit attracted to think about this. Um, this is the campaign was called Make your own center. Fatti centro tuo in Italian is make your own center, or if you want to, to make your own, uh, became your own center of your work. There is, uh, the, the day begins where the night ends. And I think it's uh, another um, good, I think that you use this. This is one of your traditions. Uh, because they, they start with the sun activities and with the lantern that you launch, I mean, you know, a light uh, on, on the sky. I think that is also a Thai, Thai tradition that, that is. Uh, and, uh, so our dreams start when we, we start to, to believe it. And uh, so, sky lanterns, <laughs> they call it. So it was really emotion. Uh, I'm sorry that you cannot hear the, the, the music, but it was really emotional and a lot of, uh, um, you know, uh, they say everybody was there. So they start really to, to feel uh, they can start. It was, everybody was organized one year after, this was one year after the, the event. So they start to uh, uh, to heal not only their bodies, but to the environment and to heal how to. So, so the, for, for them was, now they are uh, using it as an annual uh, event. Also, you, you mentioned, uh, you, you saw this picnic in Bruxelles, but this was another, another way. So the square, the main square became a sort of picnic area. So they put some carpets and everybody uh, brought carpets or some material from home. So by, by their own, and they start to play with kids and, uh, you know, what could happen if this happened. And it was all day long, you know, a lot of activities. So this is uh, this is the, the, the video, but I don't know why I don't see on the video. I don't see the video. I don't see it on the desktop.
this is another uh, what time? Okay, so I will be you know, probably I hope that I, I'm not going to, to give you a lot of uh, useless information, but uh, please ask me if you want to ask me. Okay. This is another work made by one of my he's an engineer, but he decided that he wants uh, his, he worked with the Rata Isozaki, probably you know the name of this architect. And um, he worked for the, the last expo in, in Milano as a designer. And Simone uh, is uh, my bachelor student because he decided to make a bachelor uh, in, the, in the architecture. And uh, Simone wants to work on Olbia. Olbia is a town of Sardinia that was hit by as a, as a town that was uh, in the 2013 uh, was uh, flooded severely and they had 18 victims. That for us is really a tragedy because suddenly it appears uh, and they ask themselves what to do. And uh, this is the this is the, the city of Olbia. Olbia is in the quite well known because here you have the Costa Smeralda here. It is one of the most uh, exclusive touristic areas. Uh, my faculty is here. And uh, this is the arrival point or departure point for the main uh, touristic uh, ships that are commuting from the mainland to the island. And they, you know, they arrive, they arrive here, exactly at this point. And uh, there is one of the really beautiful, Gota de Lerange is one of the best spots in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Sardinia. And also, this is really fragile, um, fragile environment. So, the, the analysis showed that there are touristic settlements here, touristic settlements in the south here, uh, data PS means uh, there is a protected area. This is a conurbation. This is the compact city, and this is the sprawl town. And uh, the analysis of it showed that uh, the compact city is 45.54%, and the sprawl town is around more than 25%. And the tourist settlements are really huge, because as there are, let's say, 24%. So, talking about the, the, the urban city, you can see here that there is an industrial area really spread away. This is Sproul Town is going in these directions. But, uh, is, uh, uh, you know, there are some connection between the residential areas and the touristic areas. But what is important is about the green areas, which are really few and very large. And this is the, the, those are the environmental protected areas. And this is quite quick. It's just explaining um, Yes, right. I don't know why it isn't. Um, this is, uh, you know, the city in 1849. Uh, today I, I've seen some students working on the time. Time is important. Mm -hmm looking to the evolution of the urban settlements. Because uh, also I soon presented, Dr. I soon presented the evolution of the metropolitan area of Bangkok. And just to look to the, this <laughs> picture, this is amazing what happened in the last 13 years. And you see what will happen, you know, is uh, this is, was a city of 3,000 inhabitants. And uh, there is the historical evolution of the city because uh, this is a railroad started, and this became a sort of harbor, and it was 40 years later. Then we are, let's say, after the Second World War, and uh, you can see that uh, Olbia is not particularly, you know, it didn't grow particularly in one century. That, you know, some, some, how that? What happened in just less than 20 years? A lot of sprawl. 2008, okay. 
So it's uh, there is an airport, and uh, this is the the sixth national airport in Italy, and it's a touristic one. So it has peak seasonal peaks of traffic and, uh, and really low traffic in the other part of the years. But what is amazing is that all these spots are built something, you know, buildings maybe. And what is amazing is that, do you remember all these basin and rivers? And uh, check. So you see, you can understand why the city was flooded, right? You do not need even to understand uh, this graphic, the historical events and the graphic law of the city. So, is uh, the city is crossed by many streams, but you see that they are overlapped. So this is uh, the, the uh, built channel. And then this is a sort of a plan that we have that is a, a tool that regulated all the actions related with the hydrological defense of the territory. And what is the, this one? It means that they're really dangerous. And you can see that main all the city is covered. Uh, but not only, we have another tool that is shown even more severe area. So, after that, this is the situation of the flooded area in 2013. The Cleopatra cyclone affected all the Mediterranean areas, and for two days there was an extraordinary rainfall. Uh, so the synthesis is that the city has really a lot of problems, and these are the effect of the, the flooded something that you, you know. So that uh, he started to understand if it's possible to, to do something instead of, uh, you know, uh, with the cost and, uh, and damages and if, uh, you know, we use the cost of mitigation instead of to repair the damages, uh, uh, what we can do. So this is the strategic plan that has six proposals, uh, mitigation and adaptation, densification of open areas, enlargement of green areas, increasing in car use, increasing in public transport, increasing in bike sharing. Um, I will just go to, you know, these are our actions that uh, design that uh, uh, we can um, be that questionable or not, that this is uh, mitigation measures. And these are the building topologies in the flooded areas. That are going to be. So the solution is to try to avoid this kind of, of areas. And there, there is also uh, enlargement of the green areas and archaeological site because we need to make the, the, the soil more permeable for the runoff. Uh, uh, water, or the, the, the rainfall, and public transport using uh, motor oh. uh, Do you know why is the, why we we are working on the fact to reduce the cars? It's not only for the pollution. It's not only for the traffic jam. But I think that you know why the cars must be you know, really few in the case of uh, area that are under, under danger to be flooded. No answer? Mm -hmm. An object that has no okay. This, the, 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 the cars are the first damages object and are the first cause of uh, disaster in us that was corrupting uh, evacuation ways, obstructing the flows of the water, you know, more than any other things. And also is a cost, because they are the most damaged uh, property during this uh, So, 
this is uh, uh, the work is starting to think about a new plan to apply all these principles. These are the only the strategies. And now I'm going to show the last one. about the center, how to, you know, uh, 
uh, the, they remove the obstacles and they make the, the, the main square more and more uh, usable. And this is uh, the, um, the history how the, the, the city was uh, used. And then her, this was her main question, how the reconstruction uh, could uh, affect on the architecture, the quality of life, uh, architecture, design quality, the urban design quality, the public space, the built environment, and not only, but also among the uh, collectivity and, uh, and on the identity and how you can use to uh, revitalize. So this is, was a shock that, uh, uh, you know, they lose their identity with, uh, with the earthquake. And then how you can uh, give back identity to this place through the resilience. So let's start, as I told you, from the public space, process of participation, and reconstruction. So this, I will speak because you know already. Oh no, this is interesting. Do you know how the, do you know how, why we put this, this person? In Italy, I don't know, in, in Thailand, uh, this I really do not know. But in the century in Italy, this is a figure one know. It's a, usually a retired man that is wandering, you know, during the day around the city, and is usually the one that is looking to any new thing that happened. So to work on this, on this uh, target, you can arise a lot of uh, activity. So those are the actions. Ah, you see the, the, the kids were on how to design a new school. It was a participatory process that included the kids. How to design a school, why they, uh, I think because it's okay. Yeah. Okay, you are ready. What is interesting here is that what is uh, the actual state and uh, the state of art of the square it was a parking lot, by the way, at the end. And this is the process that she used to, to redesign. What she said is that we have to put into practice what we learned from the participatory process. So there is the strategy and concept. Right? And uh, what she did was find an order into the disorder, but he, you know, this is the project, he made the shape and keeping the functions, looking also to the functions of the building, not only to the function of the open space. So these are some of the drawings, and she worked on how you know to build a system. And what is interesting is that she worked on the absence. I heard this morning about some greenery. Be careful. Uh, she. She, she told me she wants to put some trees. And I said, yes, OK, what kind of trees? Some trees just for the shadow and say, no, you must choose an essence that is uh, identity for the place. And this is uh, one of the main areas where the Prunus domesticus is cultivated. Uh, Prunus domesticus is a plant, but they change it. So the plant is, this is a spring, this is a summer, this is a autumn and this is a winter. So you see that scenarios created are you know, different ones. And uh, what she worked was at the end in a simple pillar, wooden pillar. We worked with my colleagues from the construction, technology and science. And uh, she used this pillar as a sort of you know, a structure that can be used just to make this kind of gates, or you can use to, to support some plants, or you can use for the markets, uh, you can use during some special events, but keeping the identity of the place. So this is uh, uh, the, the plan and the principles that she put it here are not supposed only in this area, but she want to you know, enlarge to other areas. So the same basic principle. What happened is that before it was like that, she wanted all the areas around to go back to the, to the center. 
to you, sir. how we can relate the new design of urban areas regarding geo-urbanism? How can we relate it? But previously we do yeah. eco-friendly city or uh, what is that? No, it is, uh, of course it became eco-friendly because if you look in, uh, in a way that you put together all the overlap system, and you look and you can read in a proper way each system, how they overlap, then the new design principle can fit like the geologists when they analyze the, you know, the soil, the ground. Yeah. You know, the geologists, they never look only at the surface. Yes, I know. And this is what the, the meaning of geo-urbanism is like that. We have to look through all these kind of of elements. So the principles will fit perfectly <laughs> once we understand it. So sustainability, eco-friendly, using like in this case materials uh, or in the, the project that I showed, just local materials, discover the identity, understand that there are something not only on the surface but also in the ground that makes, you know, Venice it exists because it's overlapping in different layers from the past. It was always a built city. I don't know if I asked you to your question or if you want to. No, but from your uh, lecture, yeah. what I understood. Uh, so the uh, water bodies, uh, what are green areas, yeah. open space, or other, is there any ratios in the concept of the geo-urbanism? Is there any ratios? Yeah. When That's we true. are making design, how much water bodies we conserve, how much flow, what do right. you think? Yeah. In yeah. the concept, this is, this is the concept that you have to care of because. Uh, uh, is there any ratio in mathematical perspective? Uh, practical aspect, perspective is that you have to excavate. Li not literally. Nice. Because you showed yeah. the one city is how it yeah. is enlarging. Yes. From the uh, 1849 to like yes. 2012, right. you showed the how right. it is expanding. Yeah. It's expanding. So when we are going to uh, geo-urbanism, so how much we need to preserve? It would be environment friendly or eco-friendly for the mankind or for the city dwellers. Uh, if you did you see in the presentation that I made before about the city that told me that it large 
that the proposal is to densify and then clear yeah. some area. And I think <laughs> day yeah. after day, it also yeah. alerts. Yeah. So for the uh, floods and any earthquakes, you also yeah. mentioned that it's, it will happen. So for the yeah. safety, for the dwellers of our, uh, our uh, saving the properties, yeah. so how can we design? Yeah, that's that's the, that's the, the the way how we we start to, to to work in because it's not easy. So we have to start to coordinate all this aspect. We cannot uh, just be focused in in one or that. Uh, I was in. A, I will give you an example, so maybe I can express myself better. I was talking during the, the lunch that I was a member of the international jury in the Biennale of Architecture in Transylvania last October. And uh, there were different sectors, you know, public space, private, residential, blah, urban actions, urban, you know, activity in the in urban areas. In the sector of actions, like event uh, strategies, tons of entries. We were, you know, we, we didn't know where to look to, to a word because they were such good, a lot of activities, events, performances, you know, really clever. Do you know how many entries in the public space design? It says the city is a city of Cluj that is a city of uh, uh, 200,000 of inhabitants. So, do you know how many entries? Three. Three. <coughs> we didn't award any because we said, you know, it, it's not possible to award, uh, you know, we have not to select. But when I was asked to make a speech as an urban designer, I told them, be careful. It has a meaning. It has a meaning. Because it means that you are looking to someone else, like residential, for instance, architecture, and uh, some other activities, and you are not looking to the public space. The actions need the public space. The public space need the actions. Yeah. So this is, you know, if I can answer it this way to your question. So, and to make innovation in this, in this uh, domain, it's not easy as it, 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 it looks like. Uh, th this system, for instance, is absolutely innovative. Why? Because it's simple. Use materials and use just one element. At least you have to design one element that is, you know, it gives you opportunities. This is the way how we have to look to the geo-urbanism, as, as Professor Pavia told. I didn't mention, but I show in the beginning, for instance, the garbage the garbage system. Uh, you know, so there are too many materials. <laughs> they are not always materials that you can use like in Bruxelles. Probably they are more polite than Italians. <laughs> if, if you don't have garbage in the street, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't say that can be used to, to make any ecological, ecofriendly <laughs> action. Uh, if you don't mind, I would like to uh, yeah. know from you that uh, in the European perspective, population is very low dense, especially. But uh, in the third world country like Bangladesh, yeah. or Thai, or the other Indian oh. perspective, what do you think to make uh, geo urbanization? So that is very challenging. How can we cope it? Uh, you have uh, used property. Sorry that I didn't show you some of the results of the summer school that we have in Newark this year. That is about the risk reduction design. And this uh, one of the group work on in a project that is called clandestino. How we can use to revitalize urban, not only urban business, army area, and to create with the help of the newcomers a new opportunity. But it's, it's difficult. Like you say, it's really difficult because you know we are facing hard times. Thank you. That's why jail, jail, it works because it, you have to dig and remember, keep memory.
listen to you and you always talk about public space. And I, I, I believe that the, the public space will be uh, built through the city. You always talk about all design, planning, uh, uh, urban planning, or uh, urban design, or public space. Until now, you will always say that. Yeah. But, okay, but we need to know that sometimes we lost the public space. And it's just part of the research. Yes, uh, but also in Italy. Yeah. Uh, what I can tell you, I Laquila, after the reconstruction, the main public space became the shopping area. They were not used. In Venezia, you, see, you have seen the campo. The campo is the main space. And for elderly people, actually, they took just the shuttle to go outside of Venice instead to stay in Venice because it's so crowded of tourists and the condition and blah, blah, blah. And they go out and they spend the day into the commercial shopping. So the losing uh, uh, understand, uh, understand, proper understanding, the losing of this public space Probably we think we can substitute with something else, but this is not public space. It's a space where we can have a limited access. Public space means universally accessible. And this is the meaning, how to keep it. <laughs>
้องก่อนแล้วเดี๋ยวถ่ายรูปหนีกัน